Softtail bikes are nothing new. I remember lusting over several of them in the 1990s. But do they actually improve your comfort, speed, and rear wheel traction, or are they just a gimmick? Today, we'll be using frame deflection and vibration data to assess the effectiveness of a handful of gravel bike rear suspension designs. I'll be estimating the spring rates of these frames, and we'll later compare the comfort of these frames against regular diamond ones. But first, let's discuss when suspension is advantageous and when it's not. Here's why you should use suspension. Number one, to increase traction and bike control on rough surfaces. Suspension provides a noticeable gain in traction on rough surfaces, as even a minor amount of vertical deflection at the rear axle allows the tire to maintain contact with the ground for longer. In addition, you get more predictable bike handling as the suspension keeps your bike more composed. Number two, to maintain forward momentum. Bumps rob energy from your forward momentum to instead bounce your body up and down. With a suitable tire width and pressure for the terrain, your tires can deform well over small road irregularities. But there is a limit to what a tire can do. When it comes to larger step changes, suspension systems allow you to better maintain your forward momentum. Number three, to improve comfort. Suspension insulates your body from both vibrations and harder jolts coming up from the road, resulting in more rider comfort. And number four, to use faster rolling tires. Given the improved traction and bike control, you can use narrower, lighter, faster rolling tires and achieve the equivalent grip of a more aggressive tire fitted to a non-suspended frame. This results in a bike that's suited to a broader range of surfaces. Here's why you shouldn't use suspension. Number one, you lose some of your pedal power on smooth surfaces. Although suspension can improve your comfort, traction, and even speed, a suspension damper is literally designed to remove energy from the system. This can be a hindrance on smoother surfaces when it bobs up and down, but in the context of a gravel bike with just 10 millimeters of travel, the difference in average speed is unlikely to go noticed. And number two, maintenance. A bigger downside to suspension on a gravel bike is the maintenance. That said, the designs we will be examining today are incredibly simple compared to a full suspension gravel bike like the Niner MCR9, which uses multiple pivot bearings and an air shock that calls for 50 to 100 hour service intervals. The Niner's suspension performance is on another level, however, thanks to all that complexity. Okay, let's take a look at the frame deflection numbers of some softtail bikes. Tour Magazine has created a standardized frame deflection test and have over 1,000 road and gravel bikes measured of roughly the same size. For the rear deflection test, the frame is secured in a jig and weight is attached to the seat post. The amount of vertical flex is then measured. The N per millimeter values that we'll be using are the amount of force in newtons required to move the frame and seat post a vertical millimeter. Bike one is the BMC URS. The BMC Unrestricted is a carbon gravel bike that's using an elastomer-based system that features two pins that slide on self-lubricated bushings. The system provides 10 millimeters of vertical compliance, and there are three elastomer spring rates to choose from. Two BMC URS bikes were tested by Tour Magazine with BMC D-shaped carbon seat posts. On a number of other 56 cm BMC bikes, the same seat post required an average of 123 newtons to flex a millimeter. In comparison, the two BMC URS bikes measured in at 86 and 90 newtons per millimeter. If we take the average of these spring rates, we can say that 28% less force is required to flex the frame module of vertical millimeter than other 56 cm BMC bikes with the same seat post. Bike two is the Willia Cento 10 NDR. The Cento is a carbon endurance road bike with clearance for 32 mm tires. I wanted to include this bike as it has a neat linkage built into the seat stays, which helps to dampen vibrations with its fitted elastomer. There are three elastomer spring rates to choose between. Two Willia Cento bikes were tested with Ritchie Link FlexLogic seat posts. On other 56 cm bike examples, these seat posts deflected at an average of 128 newtons per millimeter. In comparison, the Centos were measured at 80 and 90 newtons per millimeter. 
If we take the average of these spring rates, we can say that 33% less force is required to flex the frame module a vertical millimetre than other 56cm bikes with the same seat post. Bike 3 is the Cannondale Topstone Carbon. Two years ago, Cannondale unveiled this carbon gravel bike with both a suspension fork and a carbon leaf spring for the rear triangle. This rear suspension system, known as Cannondale Kingpin, is said to offer between 10 and 12 millimeters of movement at the rear axle. This design is very lightweight, but unfortunately, there is no way to adjust the spring rate. Two Cannondale top stones were tested with hologram save 27.2 carbon seat posts. This seat post on other bikes of the same size measured at 110 to 113 newtons per millimeter. Although it's worth noting that was with 25.4 millimeter seat posts. This 27.2 diameter post likely has a slightly higher spring rate. In any case, the top stone samples were measured at 78 and 87 newtons per millimeter. If we take the average of these spring rates, we can say that 27% less force is required to flex the frame module a vertical millimeter than other 56 centimeter bikes with a similar seat post. And bike four is the Basso Terra. The Basso Terra is a lowish cost aluminum gravel bike with a carbon leaf sprung rear triangle similar to what we've just seen on the top stone. The frame is said to offer 8mm of movement at the axle, and just like the Cannondale, there is no way to adjust the spring rate of this bike. The Terra was measured with a Microtech aluminium seat post. While we don't have the values for this specific post, I have found aluminium seat posts deflect at an average of 175 newtons per millimetre in 56 centimetre bikes. The Terra achieved 110 newtons per millimetre, which is 37% less force per millimetre than other 56 centimetre bikes with aluminium seat posts. If you like the technical side of gravel bikes, why not grab one of my books? The Touring and Bikepacking Bike Buyer's Guides are updated yearly for free and will teach you everything you need to know about the bikes before allowing you to compare over 220 different bikes at the back of the book. Now that we have the numbers, are these frames effective at providing traction? As we would have hoped, these soft tail frames have lower spring rates than diamond frames with the same seat post. The cool thing is that by knowing the spring rate of various seat posts, we can use the rate of springs in a series equation to approximate how much force might be required to flex these frames a vertical millimetre at the rear axle. When I put the seat post deflection numbers into the equation, each of these frames required about 300 newtons of force to flex one vertical millimetre. We can contrast this with the 8,500 newtons per millimetre of 56 centimetre steel frames that were calculated by students at the University of Brighton using a finite element method or the 7,000 to 14,000 newtons per millimetre measured in a handful of steel frames in the 1990s. When you simply apply your body weight to one of these soft tail bikes, the rear triangles are likely dipping two to three millimetres into their travel. And when you're on the road or trail, the ground forces will be deflecting the frame even more. With a frame spring rate this low, the suspension is no gimmick. It will undoubtedly take the sting out of those medium-sized bumps, allowing you to have more traction and carry more forward momentum. But what about comfort? In the last decade, component manufacturers have put a lot of research and design into creating seat posts that maximize your ride comfort by offering high levels of vibration damping and vertical deflection. A question you might be wondering, do the best carbon flex seat posts require less force to deflect a vertical millimetre than a soft tail frame? Across multiple bikes in the Tour magazine testing, the Canyon S15 seat post required 72 newtons per millimetre on average. As these deflection numbers are lower than what has been measured in our soft tail bikes, you can unlock the same or even more vertical deflection just by selecting the right seat post for your body weight. We have some real world comfort testing to check out too. Christoph at Gravel Bikes has conducted outdoor vibration tests on a Cannondale Topstone on both a bumpy forest trail and a fast gravel road. He then compared the levels of vibrations of these surfaces to his titanium bike fitted with a Canyon S15 seat post. Unfortunately, his titanium bike was set up using a different tire and wheel set combination. So the results are not definitive by any measure. But using his titanium bike, he actually found a 9% reduction in vibrations on the bumpy trail and 4% less on the gravel road. These are the kind of results we can expect, as the spring rate of the softest spring in the series is always the one that dominates, and the Canyon S15 seat post is as soft as it gets. 
In summary, rear suspension systems on gravel bikes are not a gimmick. My estimations suggest that they flex vertically with 24 to 48 times less force than a typical diamond frame, which results in more traction, more comfort, more control, and more forward momentum on rougher terrain. That said, if your priority is seated ride comfort, the data suggests that fitting a carbon flex seat post or suspension seat post to your diamond frame can yield the same or possibly even less transmission of vibrations to your body. Other than for particularly rough terrain, I think a great application for a soft tail frame design is if you use a dropper seat post. Dropper seat posts are very stiff vertically, so a soft tail frame will play a key role in maintaining your comfort. If you're interested in learning about suspension seat posts, check out my video on the topic here. And if you'd like to see my favorite bikepacking bikes, click on this video here.